know if you remember back in the days we used to do what they call morning cry. I don't know if they are still doing it. Morning cry. Morning cry. 5 a.m. You carry megaphone. You look for an elevated place where if you speak it will reach many houses. You go and stand there. Repent! Repent! You drunkard! You alcoholic! You smoker! The kingdom of God is at hand! We used to do morning cry. Morning cry. <laughs> that will be too much of a coming. Since I was born, Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. Because the first person who said that was John the Baptist. If he said that and Jesus came, and you are still saying that repent. The kingdom is at hand. Is there something wrong? Matthew 3, 2. Matthew chapter 3, verse 2. And saying, John the Baptist, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repeated in Mark 1.14. The word at hand is the Greek word epizo. E-P-P-I-Z-O. It means approaching. Or has arrived. Or is eminent. The kingdom of God has arrived. Or the kingdom of God is approaching. Or the kingdom of God is eminent. John said that because the mission of John was to say that Christ was coming. The word kingdom is the Greek word basilia. Basilia. We will explore that in the next service. Basilia. It refers to a rule or a reign. It has Old Testament synonym that we will explore. And this is John. The kingdom of heaven is here. Or the kingdom of heaven has come. Or the kingdom of heaven is coming. I remember back in the days we used to sing one song. We declare that the kingdom of God is here. Among us. The blind see, the lame walk, the dead men are rising. You remember that song? He didn't say, we declare that the kingdom of God is coming. The kingdom is here. The kingdom of God has arrived. Glory to God. I say glory to God. So he's talking about the king in the kingdom. Who does he call the king? He said, the one coming after me is greater than I. The largest of his shoes I cannot lose. I baptize with water. He shall not use water. He shall baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. That's the way John put it. That sounds all all until he now says, this kingdom shall be led by a lamb. Huh? This kingdom shall be led by a lamb. Wow. Wow. You should get angry when John said that if you are a Jew. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. John 1 29. Now, because you are a Jew, when you hear a lamb to take away, it means the lamb will be killed. Jewish people understand that. The lamb will be killed. John says just that. He will take away. Look at John 3, 36. John chapter 3 verse 36. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abideth on him. He says that this lamb will give eternal life to all who believe. Basileah. So Jesus is talking about that kingdom. 
And then he sends his disciples to go around and preach the kingdom of God. He calls it the kingdom of God in Matthew 4.23. Matthew chapter 4. Put it up as a closing service. Matthew 4.23. Matthew chapter 4, 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. He went preaching what? The gospel of what? The kingdom. Whose kingdom? His kingdom. How will that kingdom manifest? By his death. By his death. Preaching the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom. What is the gospel of the kingdom? The rule and the reign of the kingdom. Basilia. And the king of this kingdom is a servant. He's not a violent king and he's not a tyrant. The king of this kingdom is a servant. He's not a tyrant. He is not violent. That is antithetical because you can't say he rules and reigns and then he's a servant. It's a direct opposite of what a Jew would have thought was a king or what a Roman citizen would have thought. And Paul is saying this is God's own kingdom. This is not Caesar's kingdom. This is not Nigerian kingdom or government. Where if the president gives an instruction and you disobey, there are mobile policemen that will minister to you in the left hand of fellowship. No. This is the kingdom of a servant. The kingdom of a servant. And you belong in that kingdom. Glory to God. Somebody shout, I'm a citizen of the kingdom of Jesus. He's a servant. And he has put service in my heart for his kingdom and for the brethren. Don't your neighbor say, I am in the kingdom to serve you. I serve you the things of the spirit. I serve you the gifts of God in my heart. And above all, I serve you with the love of God. I give whatever I know will make you better. I'm in the kingdom of a servant and I learn service from the chief servant who owns the kingdom. He's not a violent king. He's not a tyrant. He's a servant king. Now we'll explore that and we'll explore kingdom and heaven in the next hour. He's a servant. He's a servant. Righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. It's not a kingdom of violence. It's a kingdom of righteousness. It's a kingdom of peace. It's a kingdom of joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom. Where is his righteousness? In you. Where is his peace? In you. Where is his love? In you. So where is his kingdom? In you. So I'm not going to ask you, don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? No, you are a part of the kingdom. Glory. Well, if you're a part of the kingdom, get on your feet and turn to your neighbor and tell him, I'm a part of the kingdom. I belong to a kingdom. Whose king is a servant? And has taught all the citizens how to serve his purpose and how to serve one another in love. Amen. Amen. That's the kingdom you belong. The kingdom where the king is a servant and will learn service from him. He takes water to wash the feet of the disciples. Symbolic communication that he will die to wash our sins. He didn't give us feet washing service. He used water as a symbol to show that in his death, he will be the one to wash us. He doesn't use things. He uses himself. He is the water. He is the bread. 
He is the water. He is the bread. He is the wine. He is the oil. He is all of that. He doesn't use things. So when he came inside you, the water came in. Water that never runs dry. When he came inside you, the bread came. Bread that you never hunger. When he came inside you, the oil came in. You don't need anointing service. You are the service of the anointing. Glory to God, somebody. He doesn't use things. He uses himself. Glory to God. Lift your right hands, Father. I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice. That revelation knowledge keeps growing big in our hearts. Throughout this period, as we consecrate ourselves to serve, we consecrate ourselves to serve your purpose, to serve your will on the earth, to administer your mission on the earth. Blessed to be a blessing until all families of the earth are blessed. Reaching out with the gospel, making manifest the savor of your grace. I decree that everyone under the sound of my voice is being equipped to manifest the kingdom of God. In the name of Jesus. Great grace is upon you. Whatever is not planted by God around you is rooted out. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says that amen on a note of finality. Well, if you're glad you're a part of God's kingdom and a citizen of heaven right now, then go ahead and celebrate it. Is that how they celebrate where you came from? I mean, wait. If you don't rejoice about these realities, what else are you rejoicing about? What else? What else is there to rejoice about? This is what matters most. Glory to God. Somebody shout, I'm a citizen of a superior kingdom in this world. I am in this world, but I'm not of this world. I come from a kingdom that rules over this world. I'm in charge. I'm a dual citizen. I'm a human being on the earth, and I reign in Christ in the spirit. So if earthly things are not working well, I switch to the other side and I cause miracles to happen. Somebody shout, I walk miracles. Somebody say, I make miracles happen. It's in my DNA. These signs follow me. I'm a producer of good works. I didn't hear a good amen. Are you blessed this morning?